Hey, yo, warning. We about to talk about some real stuff right now. So hide your kids, because viewer discretion is advised. But what was interesting is that my tolerance for the pornography kept on increasing, and my addiction and love for pornography just kept on rising and rising. Just like the YouTube algorithm, you know, recommends videos to you. That's how these pornography websites recommends videos to you as well. And if some sinner such as myself can overcome it, you guys are far more better than I will ever be. This tip helped me the most to overcome the pornography. Wallahi. Those who are struggling, those who really, really need the help, this is the video for you. Way of Life SQ, keeping it a hundred. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. And, um,. Today I'm going to open up to you guys about something that's really personal and I believe that's going to help a lot of people. If you're someone who's struggling with pornography addiction or perhaps you're in the earlier stages where you're just exploring pornography at first um, and you might not even think that there's a problem. You might be like, I don't watch it that much SQ. Uh, I'm going to share with you some things on um, how I got started but ultimately how I overcame my pornography uh, addiction but before we get started with that just want to let you know that Ramadan is approaching guys and these videos are going to help you before Ramadan because we don't want you to have these pornography or masturbation addictions going into the month of Ramadan so we want to jump on this earlier, right? With uh, a little over a month uh, before Ramadan starts, we want to jump on top of this, guys, just so that we are entering Ramadan as strong believers, not as weak ones crawling and limping in, okay? Uh, today's Asma al Husna uh, is a name that's going to help you. Uh, remove the pornography from your life, okay? And this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called Ash Shaheed. Ash Shaheed, okay? Now, this is very similar to the name Ar Raqib, which is linked to how I got over my masturbation addiction, that video itself, too. But Ash Shaheed is talking specifically about how Allah is all witnessing. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that our eyes will testify and, and our fingers, our skin will testify against us, right? And, you know, we have angels recording and witnessing what we write and do. But ultimately, Allah doesn't need any of that because He is a shaheed. He is the ultimate witness about what we physically do, what we think about, our intentions. Okay, so let's jump into this video because this is going to help us out a lot. Okay, let me start off with how I started off on pornography. And I just want, I just want to let you know that it started off very innocently, just like some of you have started off very innocently. Someone had to put you on, like someone exposed you to it, an older uh, sibling, a older cousin or some friend, right? Someone exposed you to it. But today's technology and times, it just comes popped up onto your phone, you know? And it, it's kind of scary, but ultimately you're getting exposed to it one way, shape, or form. So for me personally, I got exposed at a very young age to it, uh, but it, it, didn't really, it didn't really do much for me. It became bad when I entered university, right? So when I was about like... From the 17 to 20 phase, that's when it became really, really bad for me. And and I don't want you to think it's because, oh, you know, like, uh, you know, like, oh, because you needed to get married or something. Like, trust me, guys, I was doing what I had to do. You understand? Like, I didn't need pornography to do what I needed to do. You understand? Like, pornography is such, pornography and masturbation are such dangerous tools because let's suppose a person is unable to actually get a girlfriend. Like, like let's leave the zina and haram part out of it for a second because this is a huge humanity problem okay this is not a muslim problem this is a humanity problem okay a kid or a person a sister someone whoever right might not be able to physically uh, be confident enough to bag a chick or you know get with the dude so what you can do is you have this fantasy or imagination that helps you achieve all those dreams that you physically can't do that's why it's such a dangerous tool because anyone can use it you understand and you know there's no age real requirements you're just bypassing all that sort of stuff are you 18 and older yeah but like who's who's really watching you okay a shaheed is watching you but we'll talk about that later okay it became so toxic for me that i came to a point where i would look forward to my weekends where i can just chill and just watch some porn like literally it was that bad you know i'd be dorming in uni, in uni and I had a single bedroom and that's what made it worse, right? Because I had no one witnessing me, no one watching me, right? I was by myself. And because I was by myself, I was up, left up to my own uh, vices, you know? Um, 
And for me, pornography was one of them. So I'd watch whatever I wanted to watch. And in the beginning, I'd watch. And then you, and it wasn't like I would feel bad because I'm disrespecting Allah. Or, it wasn't that. It was just like, oh, like, oh, I can't believe I did that. But what was interesting is that my tolerance for the pornography kept on increasing. And my addiction and love for pornography just kept on rising and rising and rising. So... Here's what, I'm just building the story so I can tell you how I overcame it and how you can overcome it as well too, inshallah. Okay. So it came to a point where I would look forward to my Saturday and Sundays, my days off, just so I can just sit back and watch porn. I didn't think anything was wrong with it. I just would just sit back and just watch some porn, you know? If you think about it, it's actually quite disturbing and disgusting that you're, you're watching two people or three or four or whatever you're watching having relations with each other. Like, it's kind of sickening. If you really, really think about it, okay. So, it became so toxic for me that eventually, I didn't even wait for the weekend anymore. Now, I would just do it after my classes or in between my classes or in between sort of other stuff because I had a desire, a craving to do it. And here's how I like to describe the desire or craving. You know how like you get hungry and your stomach doesn't rumble, right? Similarly, you get hungry to watch porn. It's, it's a desire, like you're, you're hungry, you're itching to watch pornography. Okay. Now, that, that's what it was doing to me. And you know what, to be honest with you, even though I was like having multiple girlfriends at the time and just pretty sexually active at the time, I still felt very much like a loser for even watching it, you know, which would kill your self-esteem, kill your confidence, kill everything like that. And it's just not overall. So whether you're in this for the Islamic reasons or not, it really messes with your self-esteem and it makes you feel like crap after. And when, when has doing anything positive made you feel bad? Like when was the last time you gave charity and you felt like a jerk or you felt like a low life? No, right? Because there's certain acts that raises your vibrations and it actually does more for you. I'm getting a phone call. I don't know. We're not going to pick this up right now. we got things to do. Okay. So SQ, get on with the story then. Okay. Okay, I, I'm, I'm someone watching this. Okay, SQ, I, I see myself in this. Or I'm in the early stages right now, SQ. I'm not that serious yet. At least I'm not that far. Well, that's what I thought. I could control this. It's not, it's not that bad. Just once or oh, whatever. Not too bad. Everyone does it, right? It's healthy. It's not healthy at all. It's not. So it creeped from just a little bit to a lot now. And now, just like the YouTube algorithm, you know, recommends videos to you. That's how these pornography websites recommends videos to you as well. It recommends things to you. You understand? It, it's, it, it does that. It, there's an algorithm because they make money when you stay on the site. They'll give for free the advertisements where they're making their money and, and how they're making you lose your akhirah, how they're getting you closer to the hellfires where they make their real money. That's a different topic. Because essentially... Pornography introduced me to Islam, and that could be a separate video. But let me tell you how I overcame this, okay? SQ, get to the point. Come on now. Okay, we get it. You were, you were watching porn a lot. Get to the point. How did you overcome it? I overcame it personally by imagining one thing. I started imagining, one, what if my friends were watching me do this right now? That's my... Like, what if they were watching me right now and other people knew I was doing this right now? What would they think of me? That was the first thing that started putting me off. You see, what I started doing was associating massive pain to something that gave me pleasure. Before, I used to associate a lot of pleasure to it. Hence, I went more to it, towards it, and then the pain would come after, after I was finished. But I started flipping it over. I said, what if I associated a lot of pain to this thing and me knowing that I could quit would give me pleasure. So I sort of like reverse engineered it. I said, what would people think of me if they saw that I was doing this sort of stuff? Like what, what if this were to get leaked or exposed about me or someone saw me doing this or something? Like what would they think about me? That was the first thing that helped me a lot. And I think that that would help you as well. Okay. The second thing was this. I started to make sure because I was in a uni and my dorm room and all that sort of stuff. I started to keep my door open. Do you understand? A lot of us are on this cycle of pornography addiction because you're in your room alone. You're, you're watching these things. You're up to your vices alone. Stop being alone. 
because you're, you're left to your own you know, devices at that point. So instead, surround yourself around people and don't just go and isolate yourself. And do, That's the plan of the devil. He wants you to isolate yourself so that he can have you and whisper to you and do whatever he needs to do to you. Okay, let's go. And the final tip that really, really helped me. So if, if, you, if you recall the tips we're talking about is imagining if someone was watching me, right? Imagining that, just keeping that taqwa. You know, I was establishing taqwa without even knowing. It's Allah who was always watching me. But I was more afraid of the people. But if that helped me, that helped me. But now you're watching this, this can help you. Okay, because you can imagine someone more serious in your life watching you, okay? Then I started keeping the door open. So I'm, I'm cutting off my privacy to some degree, okay? And the final tip that really, really helped me is imagining someone was doing that to my mother or my sister. That's what helped me the most. This tip helped me the most to overcome the pornography. Wallahi. And if you look at the prophetic narration of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when a youth came to him asking to make zina halal for him specifically so he could do his deed, do his thing. You know, him and Shorty want to get together. Oh, Messenger of Allah, just give me the, just give me the nod, give me the okay that I can go do this. The Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, didn't give him the nod. He caused him to think a little bit more. He said that, you know, would you like someone to do this to your mother, to your sister, so on and so forth? And mentioning the important women in his life, he would say, Ya Rasulullah, no way. He said, no one else wants this done to their mothers too, or their daughters, or their sisters. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That caused him to really vividly imagine Someone doing that to his uh, The women that he loved And that put him off completely But then the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Gave him the ultimate hack And this goes back to the final tip That I told you in the last video Which was making dua to Allah Asking Allah to free you from this Because that's what's going to help you out the most Okay And someone in the comment section below Please tell us that dua Please tell us so, so I can pin it to the top so we all can read and benefit from it, guys. Okay? So, uh, you know, a shaheed is the witness to all these things, and we need to start becoming witnesses to ourselves. Like, no, 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 no. We need to develop more taqwa. If, if, if thinking, if, help, if what would help you get out of your pornography addiction would be imagining your mom walking in or keeping the door open or doing something like that, because that leads you to fear Allah, then it's a blessing from Allah. So that final tip of imagining my, my, my mother or my sister or something in that position or my daughter in that position is what ultimately put me off from pornography. And alhamdulillah, because of that, I've been able to stay clean from pornography, alhamdulillah, for an X amount of time, which I'll talk to you about in another video. Uh, this video is getting a little too long. I hope that this video benefited you and helped those who need it. That's all. It's for those who need it, those who are struggling, those who really, really need the help. This is the video for you. And I pray that it benefits you. And to show you that even someone such as myself can over have been through these problems. I know what it feels like and I've overcome them. And if some sinner such as myself can overcome it, you guys are far more better than I will ever be. And I know that you guys can overcome it as well. And just know that Allah knows that you can overcome it. Allah is helping you use this as an opportunity to develop more taqwa towards Him. And once you overcome this, wallahi, there's no stopping you. You're going to be unstoppable, inshallah. So keep making dua to Allah and ask Allah to make this easy for you. For all those who are struggling out there, may Allah SWT grant you goodness and make, it, make things easy for you and help you get rid of this ugly, ugly habit. Love you all for the sake of Allah. And until next time, I'm out.